This week on Real News Podcast, we are joined by special guest Roger Riker from Gamerheads as we discuss the game, a robot named Fight, following some gaming news, and then we discuss what we think will be shown at E3 this year. All that and more on this episode of Real Dudes Podcast. Welcome to Real Dudes Podcast. This is your host, Kyle. And with me, I got my deadliest dudes here. One to the left, I got Andrew. Well, howdy, partner. And to his left, he's got Cody. Howdy, ho, everyone. And to Cody's right, he's got Carrington. Hi, hi, hi. And directly 45 degrees in front of Carrington to the Southwest uh, Corridor is our special guest, Roger. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I'm so glad you guys played along with us. <laughs> um, so yeah, Just we got you, a Kyle. Just we got you. a packed a packed out show here. Uh, and with this, we have Roger uh, from Gamerheads Podcast. He is a returning guest, and I feel like we should give him the uh, royalty treatment by saying uh, hello, Roger. Hey guys, thanks for having me again. Hey. Hey, indeed, indeed. Thank, thanks for a, a great. Man. Oh, yeah, I guess this character said anytime, man. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, we've got a packed out show. I guess you could sh- you could say uh, we are discussing a robot named Fight uh, by Matt Bittner Games for, at first. Then uh, going to a break, talk about some gaming news, and then we're going to go into our thoughts about E three twenty eighteen. Um, before we talk about a robot named Fight, uh, I did want to talk to Roger here about a certain game that he's been playing, since, uh, it is an indie game, and, uh, apparently he has created a lot of people from the Crossplay Compatible, uh, network, a little game called Death Road to Canada. Yeah. So, Roger, uh, I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but, uh... Could you kind of just give us an idea of what you've been doing with us and why we've all been dying horrific deaths? <laughs> well, it's because you guys are so unprofessional. And um... okay, <laughs> no, uh, no, it's um. So if if anybody has played this game or have not played this game, uh, it is a um, game that reminds me of. Um, Oregon Trail meets zombies, basically, what that game is. Uh, and it's it's pretty fun. It's crazy. You can make your own characters in the game. And that's something I've, I realized, like, I don't know, like, probably day two of playing that. I'm like, whoa, you can create your own characters. This is awesome. And once I figured that out, I started making all my friends and all the other people that are in the crossplay compatible network and putting them in the game. Uh, and then you... Uh, basically are, are marching from Florida up to Canada um, trying to get away from the zombie apocalypse because apparently in Canada that's where the safe zone is. Okay. Uh, apparently can't, zam- zombies can't live, live up in the cold. I don't know. So, yeah. They're so, too friendly. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, it's, it's, um, y- so it's, like you said, it's an indie game. And uh, it, it reminds me of Oregon Trail in regards to that you'll like come across different things that you'll have to stop and get supplies like either weapons or food or gas for your vehicle, and uh, and you just travel along and sometimes you'll run into uh, sieges what the uh, sieges which what do they call um, which is like just waves of zombies and you have to survive that. Um, You'll just come into malls and you'll try to like get the supplies and get as much supplies as possible without dying from being attacked by zombies, and it's pre uh, it's 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 um it's randomly generated uh, areas too. Like some of them are pretty much the same, but um, like the other night I was running, I was streaming it, and we ran into a UFO sighting, um, mm-hmm. which was awesome, and we ran into uh, this uh, they called them the Man in Black, which looked like Men in Black. And okay. an alien, and uh, we got attacked by a bunch of zombies, or the characters did, and um, you know we just followed around the, the alien, 
uh, is zapping the zombies and killing them all. And the Men in Black guy <laughs> got killed, and I was like, oh my god, no! <laughs> uh, but then we got the alien spaceship, or car, the alien car. It looks like an alien spaceship. Uh, it was, it's, I don't know, it's so cool. It's like just random things like that happen. That and you're sounds, like, wow, this is crazy. Yeah, that sounds super random. Yeah, it is, it is super random. And I think, I mean, you can play different, like, types of games. You can play, like, a short version. Um, you can play, like, the normal version. And then once you beat the game, then it unlocks different, um, game modes. Like, there is, like, a siege mode where there's just waves and waves of zombies coming and you just have to survive as long as you can. Um... But yeah, and then you can make, the fun part is, like I said, you can make your own um, characters in the game, and then mm-hmm. you can give them personalities and also um, jobs, I guess, if you will, or like what they're what Like they're good scouting at. or yeah, resource exactly. management or something. Exactly. Okay. Um, so like, for instance, my character is the martial artist. He can like karate <laughs> chop and stuff, but he can't use guns then, which is crap, because like I'd rather have a gun, but whatever. Yeah, but a gun runs out of ammo. Your yes. arms... Are are always loaded. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I got the gun show going on. Uh, are those weapons registered? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and I made it to Canada once with one group, um, and then it was just you have you have to survive against a swarm of zombies, and so you can have up to four people in your group at a time. And I only had two people. Only two people survived it when we made it to Canada. And out I of died. four, or did you have two people that went? To Canada, from Florida to Canada. Um, so I started. I start. You start off with. Um, you can either pick one or two people in your group okay. to start with, and then you pick up people along the way. Um, but the the stop right before Canada, um, two of my people died in the group, mm. and then I didn't have another chance to pick up another character or two. So. Yeah, he, he's, you know, died was like air quotes. Like, never mind that he's the one who killed them because, you know, he needed their stuff, but whatever. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, dang, they go. got him. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, well, it is kind of fun. There's, there's times where you have to, um, or you can, like, kick people out of your group. Um, so Ben from our podcast, uh, he was one of the first people that was in. It was me and Ben that started this group. Uh, in the last playthrough, and uh, <laughs> and there's always like funny banter um, while you're riding on the road. They just have like just random banter that's happening. And my character said, "Boy, I really wish we would be in Canada right now." And Ben's character said, "Boy, I really wish you'd shut up right now." <laughs> <laughs> so I kicked him out of the group. <laughs> now Did you just drop him off life, on the side of the road. That, is that true to Ben's character in real life? Uh, when you say something like that. Uh. Yeah, and he would say it sarcastically, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and I wouldn't oh kick man. him out of the group in real life, but in the game, it was pretty funny. Uh, well, oh, I am uh, excited to hear some future updates about other characters in the game. Yeah. Um, uh, I, did have, cool. I, did, I did have one playthrough um, that Carrington, I found Carrington, and uh, he got attacked by a bunch of bandits and got killed. And that was sad. Nice. Yeah. You didn't make me black enough. That's the issue. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> is it procedurally generated? It is, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you'll run into some of the same events, right? But, um, yeah, I mean, they're supposed to be procedurally generated in random events. But, I mean, it. it some of the things, like, you'll come to a mall or you'll come up to, like, a, an ammo... Um, shop or you'll come up to a hospital they're all kind of the same so okay well it sounds uh it sounds like a pretty cool game and from what i've seen it's mostly it looks uh is it 16 bit i guess yeah yeah it's yeah so it has a retro, retro feel to too. it yeah um Very and cool. it's 12 dollars, so it's it's really affordable too it's a steal man yeah nowadays that's a good price yeah uh so maybe so uh, that's Death Row to Canada. Another game that's procedurally generated is a robot named yeah. Fight. <laughs> hey! Segway! <laughs> really bad segue. the game segue. we are covering today. Uh, so yeah, so this is a game that I've been playing over the last, I want to say, three weeks. And it is... Like I said, it is procedurally generated. It is Metroidvania type game. Uh, so as you are exploring the map, 
you unlock certain areas, then eventually your gun gets upgrades to get to unlock other areas. Uh, the premise of the story is you are a robot. And named Fight. I named mean, Fight. <laughs> and spoilers, you... major spoilers. Come on, dude. I, I didn't even give him a warning. <laughs> <laughs> it's always more fun to give that warning after you do the spoiler. Oh, good Duh. point. Yeah, and uh, Chuck Norris shows up and kills everybody. Oh, yes. oh sorry. Sorry. Greatest about that. game ever. Um. So, I the premise of the story is you are on a planet that is uh, populated with robots, and this alien life form has come down to take over, and uh, the robot hierarchies have left the planet and left you behind uh, on the planet. Uh, so you are stuck on the planet trying to fight your way through these monsters, uh, which are fleshy monsters, I guess you could call them. They are, uh, they're really weird looking, uh, like mouths and eyes and different organs and stuff. And but are you saying they have mouths and eyes or their mouths and eyes look weird? I mean, they're just like, like, uh, one of the monsters is called, I think it was mouth meat or meat mouth. And it's just this giant ball of just eyeballs and mouths. It's one of the bosses. And there's smaller versions of it that you fight throughout the levels. Um, and so these monsters have taken over the world. And eventually you have to get down to the final boss. Kill him. And obviously when, you know, take back your planet. Um, I guess I'll With go over it the... being Metroidvania oh, and procedurally generated, um, have you actually beaten the game yet once? Because it no. is also roguelike. I, I have not. I've been having a difficult time with this game, and that's, I, I was going to say, I don't feel right giving this a rating, because it's, to me, and I don't know if I'm just bad at the game, but it's difficult. Like, for me, it is difficult. Um, some of the things I did want to go over with it uh, was the, I, I really enjoy the art style of it, and, and the monsters, or the aliens that they had made, that uh, Matt Bittner had, had made in the game. Uh, the, it's such a cool art style, and the uh, the the bosses, uh, their design, uh, super unique, um, and like kind of grotesque and just you know weird, just something that you would expect from like a Metroid game, pretty much. Um, uh, it controls good too. I, I played it both on the Switch and uh, handheld and docked, and it, it plays really good both. Uh, and even though the boss fights are somewhat simple, uh, they were a lot of fun. Um, so there's some, now, of, the, some uh, of the the pros as far as the game goes. What, what is it? Are the monsters themselves procedurally generated, or are they just random? What do you mean? Like the, their design or just their locations? Uh, their design. Uh, they're, they are... Uh, the monsters are the same throughout the game. I mean, you run into the same monsters over and over the okay. bosses. So, so, all right. So when you, this is what I had to struggle with. Uh, saves are very, very limited. And, uh, so far the only place that I've found, uh, if you, is one save room. And so you go there and you save your game. And then once you die, that save room is broken. You can't, you can't, you won't go back there. You restart the game completely. And so if you don't find the save room and you run to a boss room uh, and you die, you restart the game completely. It's roguelite. So, like, I guess you call it the Dark Souls of these games because it's really <laughs> difficult. And at first, I think the first week I played it, I was like, man, this is a really cool design. I really enjoy the challenge of this. And... By by like a few days ago, I was just ready to throw my switch through the window because I would get further and further and then just die and then have to restart. Um, I don't know if there's other ways of saving the game other than the save rooms, but it makes it difficult because then once you die, uh, you have to um, restart your level and your level is procedurally generated. So everything that you found, all your upgrades, all the bosses that you killed are all in different rooms, different areas. And some of the areas, I mean, they aren't even the same that you've played before. So it's like a whole new game again, which makes it easy to get killed again. Cause you don't know what's your, what's in the next room. 
I guess the upside to it is uh, the music changes before you go into a boss room, so you kind of have an idea where the boss is. But if you have explored everything uh, before that point, and you just go into the boss room and you die, then you're kind of, you know, screwed. So that now, as far as you know, the story outside of being a robot and your name is fight and you're on a planet and you're trying to save it. Is there really much of a story outside of that? Um, there, it, it doesn't dive any further than what I've explained like before previously. I mean, you know, the aliens, they come down to the planet, your robot race flees the planet, like the, the higher ups and you're stuck down there fighting to get rid of, uh, the head honcho of the aliens. Um, there are some other robots that you run into uh, that you can give them offerings because you find these little um, collectibles and metal scraps as you go through the level. Either you shoot pieces out of the wall and you can find them, uh, which I also didn't like um, because it's not like a piece of broken wall that you notice. Literally, you're running through each section, just shooting up at the ceiling and shooting at the walls, just see if you find a just a random uh, metal scrap, which kind of makes you know you don't want to run through each level just shooting randomly. Um, but once you have enough scrap and enough orbs and stuff, and you offer it to them, uh, you can you can get. Uh, your stats upgraded, or you get cursed, and your health is depleted, and your your energy is depleted as well for your uh, special guns and stuff. And that was the other thing that I had difficult, like a difficult time understanding, because it doesn't explain to you like, all right, so here's a combination to get you know stronger weapons or or stuff, or here's a combination that's going to curse you and get you, you know, less health. You, I would, I would just go to each robot and just give them random things, and uh, either I had pleased him or I offended him, and you know, it, it was just random each time. So, I, I tried doing some research online, finding stuff, but I really couldn't find anything regarding this game. Uh, you know, is it because to you piece think of robots? It's maybe what a smaller it? game. Yeah, I think so. Um, and and I hate to sound so negative about the game because I really I enjoyed it and and I think it is a solid game. It's just I had a difficult time getting through it. It doesn't hold your hand, and I'm not going to say that was a flaw of the game because I mean, there's games like Dark Souls out there that doesn't hold your hand, and people love that game. And the game itself, I don't think the game's broken by any means. Uh, a lot of the times that I I died, it was user error. It was me falling into a spike pit and trying to get out of it, and I just kept you know jumping into it because I was panicking. Because you know, if I died, I had to restart the entire game. Um. So, I like I said, I don't I don't feel comfortable giving it a rating just because I haven't finished it yet. Uh, in a, in a way, I feel like it is worth the money. Uh, because, you know, I've been playing it for three weeks. I haven't beat it yet. I still enjoy playing it. Um, but it's, it's not a game that I'm going to sit there and play for, you know, three hours at a time. I, I did read some re other reviews on it, and I think it took some people about an hour and a half to two hours to beat the game, uh, which is, you know, which is, it's definitely reasonable. Um, I so, yeah. know in your experience, you can't really answer it. But from things you've read online, is it replayable as well? Like, is there an incentive to replay the game after you've oh, yeah. it? Oh, yeah. So the cool thing is, is even if you do die, um, some of the things that you do unlock and you find throughout the game will go on with you to the next game, but you have to find mm -hmm. them in the map. Okay. Um, and then with the game being procedurally generated, uh, every playthrough is a different experience. I mean, you end up fighting the same bosses and stuff, but the whole map layout... And um, and the uh, the weapon and upgrade layout is completely different each time. And there's multiple endings, right? Isn't isn't that? Yeah, uh, from what I I understand, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's uh. So just based on what you've played and what you've seen and what you've experienced, it won't be a final rating. But if you could give it a rating just right now in this moment, what would it be? Yeah, I thought about it the other day, and I was thinking. Uh, probably a 7.5 uh, 
because like I said, you know, the gameplay is good. Controls good. I think it looks good. Um, and most of the, you know, I, I didn't really run into any kind of, um, mechanical error with the game or, you know, any, anything that was wrong with it. It's mostly just me dying because I made a dumb mistake. Um, the only the only complaints that I had is that it's just there is hardly any tutorial that doesn't it it doesn't explain much, um, which it doesn't need to. But when it, like my biggest thing was with the robots that you can get upgrades and stuff. Like there's nothing explained there. I don't know uh, what orbs you know or what metals like what number of metal scrap that I can give to them that'll give me an upgrade. But then again, you know I was thinking about that today as well. Like with with uh, shoot Breath of the Wild, uh, I was thinking, well, when you cook stuff, you can either screw it up or you can, you know, make something that that really increases your stats. But you don't know that until after you've made it. Like you don't know any recipes, right? Well, you can look those online though, can't you? But, yeah, but I mean, I, I tried I tried hard not to look at this game online uh, until maybe this past week, and I didn't find a whole lot. Um, but if like you take it back in mid nineties, if breath of the wild was released yeah. then, or if it was like Ocarina of time, and the same concept was going on, you would have no idea what yeah, to do. True. Yeah. Unless you bought like the, the guide. Game guide. Yeah. Yeah. But it yeah. sounds like this game, you can't but, even have a guide with if it's procedurally generated. I don't know how you could have a guide with this game. Yeah. I, that's true. I don't know. I, I went to the website and looked up some stuff and uh, went to uh, a robot named Fight Wiki. And they have some information on the monsters there, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and I've talked to Matt Bittner a little bit, and we are trying to schedule to have him on, on here. So um, just you know, talk to him about the development of the game and maybe get some pro tips to our audience. Because, like I said, I enjoyed the game. Um, and... If you do like Metroidvania games, I mean, uh, it might be something that you want to check out if if you haven't, if you're kind of like on a, you know, check out other games. But I know, Matt, you, you're you a big fan of the Castlevania games, right? You mean Roger? Roger. Why did I say Matt? Who am I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I, I am a big fan of Castlevania. Disregard that. Disregard <laughs> that. Okay. I don't know who Matt is, but I'm a big fan of Castlevania. Yeah. Forget, forget <laughs> Matt. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I, you know, um, when you, when you said you're, pay, you're going to be talking about this game, I did pick it up, um, 20 minutes before the podcast started and started playing it. So I don't know what to think about it at this point. It's only 20 minutes in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll probably end up picking it up cause it is pretty cheap too. Like it's yeah. less than 20 bucks. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I, you know, it, like I said, it's there's a lot of replayability in it, so I think it's definitely worth the money. Um, and if you are a Metroidvania fan, I, I would say that this might be something that you would want yeah, to check out. It reminds me a lot of Metroid. Like, yeah. Yeah. Even the yeah. character design. Yeah. So, yeah, that is A Robot Named Fight by Matt Bittner. Um, keep an eye out in the future. We are wanting to have him on the show, and, I, uh, and if schedules work out, he should be on definitely before the end of summer. So... Let us take a break. All right, all right. What's up, everybody? I'm Tyler. I'm Lucas. And I'm Chris. And we're better than static. We meet up once a week and talk about movies, comics, and video games. I don't I don't want to talk about that. What? Why, why are you complaining about all the topics I bring up? I'm trying to sound professional, Chris. But we're not that good. We, we are too good. We may not be great, but we are better than static. You guys can hit up iTunes, Podbean, Google Play, and YouTube to check us out. If you like video games, debates, and silly banter, you'll love Gamerhead's podcast. Outside of your store, because I do feel like your store knows its identity. I do. I think that you guys know what um, you are. No? Not always. Really? He sells fidget spinners. Well, not anymore. I mean, for a yeah, while. Not I mean, anymore. Not, not You're that experimenting not with our... anymore. That's what I'm saying, though. You were just experimenting. <laughs> Golf was made by a Japanese guy. Yeah. Yeah. 
go, I wanna. Yeah. Be oh, the game. Yeah, not the okay. sport. Yeah. Okay, I was yeah. like, huh. Well, speaking of Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Follow Gamerheads on Podbean at gamerheadspodcast.podbean.com. We here at Real Dudes want to give a huge shout out to Guitaro Man for letting us use his music on this episode. You can find more of his music on SoundCloud, and be sure to give him a follow on Twitter at I am Guitaro Man. That is G I T A R U M A N. Thanks, and let's get back to this episode. Welcome back to Real Dudes Podcast. Hope you enjoyed those wonderful advertisements that we have. I'm sure one of them was probably from <laughs> Gamerheads. <laughs> probably. Maybe. Possibly. Uh, Why would you do that? <laughs> this is so unprofessional. I'm leaving. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Roger, so I've been on um, Play Comics Podcast, and I love when he returns to Rick, he's like, I'm sure you really enjoyed that show. He doesn't even yeah. know what show he's going to put on. Yeah. <laughs> so we should start doing that. Like, I'm sure you're going to enjoy those advertisements. <laughs> yep. Hope you enjoyed those advertisements from our wonderful friends at Gamerheads. <laughs> <laughs> you still sound uh, unsure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're still our friends. I guess we'll see if he kills That's everyone right. off in Death Row to Canada. Ayo. So just getting into a little news here real quick uh, before we talk about the Big E3. Um, so I just want to let you guys know. Yeah. I was going to say, your this. favorite game is now on all platforms, not just PC and Xbox. Yeah. Has it, has it been released already on other platforms? Uh, I think. It's, I know for a says. fact it's getting released. Uh, Hello Neighbor is getting released on... Uh, other platforms, blah 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 blah. I don't want to talk about it, which is funny because Roger was just listening to your show and Ben, ben was talking. <laughs> and I said, I said, and that was actually from you that I said I heard this game wasn't very good. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and I I I sat up last night playing games, and you ever just sit and play games, and and you're. You know, just kind of like, when do I even play? Like, do I even want to play anything right now? And you sit there and look at your library, and you're like, I don't want to play this, I don't want to play this, I don't want to play this. I saw Hello Neighbor, and I was like, man, maybe I should play that. <laughs> and you know what I did? What's that? I didn't play it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I, is it even still installed on your Xbox right now? What is it? Is it still installed on your Xbox right now? Yeah, I have it on my on my hard drive. Um, wow. It is. I need to revisit it because I feel like, you know, when I played it, it was right at launch and there was mm -hmm. a lot of problems with it. And at launch, I really didn't like it. Apparently, the mm -hmm. community is eating it up right now. And I agree with Ben. Uh, you know, for kids, I really think this game is appealing and the scare factor is probably really interesting to them and, and scary. Kind of like at Five Nights at Freddy's. But man... It was not the game that I expected at all, especially from seeing the previous trailers of it. I was expecting a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's cool that it's getting released on other platforms, and I hope it's getting released on other platforms in a unbroken stage. Well, yeah, maybe you don't know, because um, one game that the internet loves to hate right now, even to this day, is No Man's Sky. Yeah. And that is not the same game as it was when it launched. And mm -mm. it's about to come out with a huge update. So yeah. maybe Hello Neighbor has had a similar treatment. I hope. I sure hope. Because I sure hope they aren't robbing people $30 <laughs> and giving the same thing they gave at launch. Well, you, you know what's funny? I, just, uh, just a side note. Like, one of my favorite games is the game Defiance. Well, it was, I should say. And um, that game launched, and it was $50, and then it came down to 20 and then 10 Now it's free to play. But it started oh, out boy. with tons of bugs. I mean, it was just awful. Uh, and now they're coming out with Defiance um, 24 what is it, 2050, I think they're calling it? And it's supposed to be, it's for the the next-gen console, or this current-gen consoles, I should say. And um, mm -hmm. and so I signed up for the beta for it, and I was, like, super excited about it. And it was the same game, the same exact game, and I started all over. I had to go through the whole gosh-darn story all over again, and uh, it sucked. And I, I was like, no way, I'm not playing this game again. Like, I don't want to start over. So, mm -hmm. is it just... 
is it the same game, but it's just released on yeah new consoles? And yeah, they, they gave it a, it a new name. name. They, they updated it to Defiance 2050. <laughs> but it's free. Weird. It's a free-to-play, so... Yeah. yeah you just can't complain know, about but that. It was really disappointing to find out that it's just basically the same exact game. And I... You know, and I, yeah. you know, I put I put in so many hours into that game, uh, and I don't want to start over. I don't want to do that all over again. No, no. Is that the game that's based on the TV show, and they tried to make them yeah, go hand in yeah. hand with each other? Yeah, I thought so. Guys, have you played Pokemon I Quest? Did. Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on it? Um. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> crickets, crickets, crickets. Yeah. <laughs> it's different. Uh, it's it's a bad port of a mobile game that's not even out yet. But it's not like a bad game. It's just a bad port. Wow. What, why a good way why do you it? say it's a bad port? So, it's clearly made for a touch screen, which a Switch has a touch screen. Um, but to me, like if you're gonna play play it um in the dock mm. it's just kind of clunky and weird um because the touch screen on the switch does work for it so it works perfectly in handheld mode but it's also kind of weird to hold the switch in your hand and not use the joy cons and play it completely on the touch screen oh see i played it using joy cons but i've only played about five minutes of it i haven't gotcha. had I've, I finished the first two dungeons of it so I'm, oh wow yeah I like it a lot, like, but I said it, like I said, in my opinion, it's a bad port of a mobile game that's not even out yet because the mobile version comes out supposedly at the end of June. Yeah. What's your thoughts of the the art style of it? Because everything it looks like uh, Pokemon Minecraft. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't play like it, but it looks like it. Right. As far right. as it this, being blocky. this game reminds me more of a like, old unknown GameCube game called Cubivore. Where mm-hmm. you're, um, I've seen, I've seen Game Informer <laughs> replay that, and that game oh, is awful. Yeah. I remember when that game first came out back in the day, where you're just basically a cube like animal and you try and eat stuff and grow. Yeah, the art style reminds me more of that than more so than Minecraft, but uh, okay, I don't know, it doesn't bother me as much, but it is different for a Pokemon game for sure. Cody or, cool. or uh, Andrew, do either of you have a Switch? <clears throat> Well, it's funny you should ask that question. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> yes, no. Cody does, no. does not because, you know, he hates all things Nintendo because he hates fun. Um, and quick plug, we have a great t-shirt with that quote from Cody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, not, not in my, my house. house. Yeah, no, <laughs> no uh, yes, I have a Switch and, and love it because, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome. But uh, Cody just refuses to see that. <laughs> I like the old Nintendo consoles. Uh, once the Wii U was introduced, mm-hmm. I fell out. Well, mm-hmm. once the Wii U was introduced, I think a lot of people fell out. Oh, a lot of so people fell like out. So that's like one console, guys. That, like we that's had one, and that was last yeah, generation. I was going to say, <laughs> come on, let's let's move on. I, I will say, yeah. I was in the same boat. I was like really not going to get a Switch, and just I was really like, oh come on, this is all gimmicky. And then I picked one up, and now that's all I play. So. <laughs> And then you talk yeah, well, to I, us. I have to give props to Carrington, honestly, because like I mean, I wasn't down on it, but I was just like, eh, I've got you know, I've got my PlayStation. I might be, pick up an X- Xbox again because I've had one in the past, and like it was kind of third on my list. And he's like, no, dude, it's amazing. It's like seriously, get one. It's like, in fact, I'll get you one. Just like pay me something, and I'm like, yeah, here's okay. ten dollars. <laughs> here's a case of beer. Oh, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> uh, but so. No, yeah. Gone. I was gonna say, uh, following uh, Pokemon Quest, Pokemon Pikachu and Eevee Go are releasing as well. Oh yeah. Um, the they kind of coincide with Pokemon Go on mobile, and yes. from what I've heard, oh, or from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, mm-hmm. the Pokemon that you catch in Pokemon Go, uh, yes. transfer over to those games. Yes, okay. but it's, cool. it's it's more like more or less a Pokemon Yellow remake, uh, which is also interesting in that effect because it takes place in Kanto uh, and none of the like newer generations or anything like that. Um, but the way you catch Pokemon are like Pokemon Go, um, which I think find interesting. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm I'm excited about this game. I'm so that- um, especially since you can play two players, and I'm excited to play this with my daughter. 
she was really into Pokemon Go. But then, you know, I just didn't want to use up all my data on that game, and I stopped playing it. But this looks fun. Yeah. yeah. And two, um, one thing that, in my opinion, Pokemon Go lacks is trading and battling. And Pokemon Pikachu and Eevee Go both have that. They have trading and battling. But it... Nintendo isn't quite clear if it's just local or if you can do it online as well. So they're not quite clear on that right now. Um, but at the fact that it has those elements in the in the game, I to me, is a huge, huge step in the right direction. Yeah. And then uh, following that announcement, they were talking about that that we are still going to be getting a, a Pokemon RPG brought to the Switch. That's it, in like the Sun and Moon-esque style. I'm telling you, if you deal with stocks and things like that, I mean, now would be oh, the time on. to invest in Nintendo. <laughs> because once on. these games come out, yeah. their stocks are going to shoot up. Yeah. So that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, another uh, teaser that we got this week was the Fallout 76. Uh, the biggest West reason Virginia. why... Yeah, why I... <laughs> like, just, just, just the trailer itself kind of blew me away was uh it pans away from a radio playing country roads and so the only thing that i know about the game is it's supposedly going to be a multiplayer game and i don't know if it's going to be in the uh multiplayer like realm of like a of what rage is or if it's going to be something like elder scrolls online um the fact that if it's going to be in west virginia that's going to be super cool at least for me, just because no, I, I like agree. West Virginia. You know, we've had a couple of friends already say, Kyle, that you know they're going to role play as you if it's West Virginia, but it's since it's yeah you know, in your backyard. Yeah. So I I don't know if it's going to take if it is West Virginia. I mean, would it take place in Morgantown, where the university is? Charleston, the capital. Huntington really isn't anything. It's the third mm-hmm. bigger city in West Virginia. Um, or if it's going to be taken out like towards Snowshoe. Where the observatory and and you know mountainous regions are of West Virginia, um, but either way, it's, it, I'm interested in seeing what what Bethesda does with this game and uh, you know what they're experimenting with. And I will say, with the way Bethesda has been announcing their games and things like that, even though we just got a teaser. I wouldn't be surprised if it releases this October or November because uh, the yeah. way they they usually announce stuff and and. Ha- and then, yeah. boom, it's out. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, well, lastly, I was just say, oh, you know, ahead, it's Roger. funny. Like, I know this is going to be really sacrilegious, and I'm sorry. But <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed the Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. Like, I played those games a lot. I just never got into Fallout 3, mm-hmm. and, and I never got Fallout 4. So, I don't know. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, those games, those games are completely different from, you yeah. know, Fallout 1 and 2. I um, saw a someone of a meme recently in regards to that, Roger. So you may or may not appreciate this. Uh, so basically it was saying like how people who play the original Fallouts 1 and 2 are like the same people who saw the original trilogy of Star Wars. And they say the same thing about like the new trilogy of Star Wars and the new Fallouts, how, you know, they're garbage basically. But the people who grew up with whatever generation... Um, that they play like so uh, you know played fallout three and four of course those people love those games and have no idea about one and two and and of course they love the new trilogy of star wars so i just thought that was interesting someone brought that out uh, do you feel <laughs> the same way roger well okay uh it will not well, so are we talking about the new trilogy are we talking about like phantom menace new trilogy or we're talking no 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 i'm talking oh, like the, the current, current trilogy trilogy uh, uh i don't i don't yeah i don't think the new trilogy is bad i actually like the new trilogy so uh I don't have a problem with it. Okay, and so I, maybe you're in the minority. <laughs> and I don't have a problem with the new <laughs> Fallout games. I, I just, I don't know. I just, um, you know, I, I played played the hell out of the first two games, and just I love the fact that there was just, mm-hmm. I mean, and I'm sure this is the same with three and four, but just like you know, all the the fact that you can just do whatever you want in those games, it was amazing. I was just like, wow, this is such an amazing game. And maybe it was just that you know, at that time, it just blew me away of how awesome those games were. And, and now I just, I don't know, mm-hmm. I just don't have that same, I don't know, I kind of feel like, oh, I've seen this before. 
Uh, then you have people like me who prefer the Elder Scrolls franchise over Fallout, even though I don't hate Fallout. I just prefer a more fantasy-like setting than a post-apocalyptic mm. setting. Hmm. But that's not to say I don't like Fallout. I mean, I, I do like it. I just don't like yeah. it as much as Elder Scrolls. No, I, I, I can see that. Yep. Uh, lastly, uh, there are resources out there saying that Fortnite is coming to Switch. Oh, and from what <laughs> I've read, uh, Kotaku's uh, Cecilia uh, D'Anastasio, uh, she, her article on it, uh, states that there's multiple reports and clues that Fortnite's going to be making its way that way. This this way to Switch. I mean, honestly, if Switch can run it, I mean, it would make sense for them to jump in on the money. So, Cody, you're going to get one then? You're going to get a Switch, Cody? Yeah, say so tell us how you read. Really oh feel. no, no, I'm fine. <laughs> and I pretty much quit playing anyhow and all this stuff. So, I mean, it, it was cool, if, but it. It just got Dude, over repetitive, and they have a they have shopping carts now. I okay? saw that, <laughs> and now so, shield um, mushrooms, and all this jetpacks and shotgun modes and stuff like that. It's it's cool. It's still a fun game, and it's fun to play. Watching it, I can't do anymore. All the YouTubers and streamers who do it, it's just boring now. But I still play every once in a while. Meh. Uh, I, they, yeah. I will I'm say surprised quick, they haven't. Oh, go ahead. Um, I've announced this before on the show, um, but there is a game coming out on the Switch, an indie game called mm -hmm. Crazy Justice, which is basically the same premise, and to me, it yep. looks a lot better. And it's cross-platform, so it doesn't yeah. even matter what what you get, uh, what you play. Uh, so, Cody, if you get it on Xbox and I get it on my Switch, we can still play together. Uh, uh, All right. Although I'll see you uh, there. Yeah. play it on the go, and and then you can't, Cody. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that is true. It's fun. Yeah. And I, I did back it because it, it did have um, a Kickstarter-like campaign to it, but it was called Fig. Um, so I did back it. So I'm, I'm still waiting. Nice. Nice. I saw that on Twitter today um, for the first time, and I thought the game looked pretty interesting. No, no, yeah, it's very unique, and I mean, it has a battle royale map, royale mode. It also has a like co-op story type mode as well uh, built into it. So it's not just battle royale mode. So it's kind of like Fortnite. Shh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. All right, so let's get on to the meat and potatoes of our off-topic here. With which Guys. Cody can discuss because it's not just Nintendo anymore. Yeah, yeah. And we're not yeah, going to start out. Or wait. What, uh, <laughs> what do I have here? We are. Are we starting out with Nintendo? Uh, what do I have? No. no. <laughs> I guess I'm leaving again. Hold on, guys. I'll be back. Give me five minutes. I thought I wrote. Oh, I wrote down notes on my. Uh, never mind. Give me one second here. Oh, I'm out of here. This is so unprofessional. I just <laughs> oh, can't. <laughs> All right, so I I wrote notes separately out of the, out of our documents. So I'm sorry, guys. I thought I was writing documents. I was writing a notepad on my phone. Uh, <laughs> so we are going to talk about E3 here. Uh, let me just begin by saying FIFA hype. FIFA uh, hype. This again. Uh, <laughs> every year. Pretty I mean, much. Come on. You know what, Cody? You know, usually I'm you know I'm against you on these things, but I'm so I with agree. you. Who cares? Now, I mean, every oh, single okay. year you can look forward to EA having devoting. 20 minutes to FIFA, so we can always look forward to it. So, yeah. I mean, I look forward to so FIFA. Is this basically like the esports version of like the World Cup where every American claims to actually care about soccer for like a yeah. month and then like <laughs> we wait four years <laughs> to actually care again? Yep. So, yep. this is this is the backstory. Hey, for, the I mean, world, we have the a world ton Cup of new is listeners. coming and that's going to be oh, awesome. Yeah. It is going to be great. So and the US is Cup. not in it, so ha. That's true. But it'll be, it'll be yeah, a fun run. You know. You know, Cody, I know you secretly, not secretly at all, want to be German, but oh, it'll be a good run. American, so it's our fifth year. We got this. I'm just saying, you know, you are actually, you know, you're born in America, and even though no, you I'm might born have in Germany. like bloodlines that go further back, <laughs> no. you're an American. No, so you know, the self hatred Germany. is it's kind of yeah. sad. Carrie has more German blood. Yeah, 
Okay, so like, and and uh, and uh, if you like lived in Germany for like three seconds when you were first born, okay. it count. And this is how the real dudes podcast <laughs> sure. ended. Yeah. Where's your sit? Okay. Yep. No, no, no. no. But seriously, <laughs> this is my last episode. I guess guys, Andrew's host. gonna kick well, me no, out. Thank you, but Andrew. No, seriously, no, no, no. When like, so you were actually born in Germany? Yeah. Okay. And do you have German citizenship? Not anymore. I had to choose when I was eighteen. Ah, oh, gotcha. And like you made a bad choice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, at least according to you. <laughs> oh, geez, your soccer team sucks. <laughs> Don't worry. When hey, when whenever Trump gets that wall built, you can just go on the other side. <laughs> and we're talking about E three here. Yeah, I'll be on, on the other side. side. You can yeah, say out. Who cares? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I couldn't resist. All right. Uh, okay, I'm done. <clears throat> get a little, get a little, a little off topic here. Uh, it's fun. Get get a little political with Trump and uh, the walls. I don't think so, it was political. I it was think it's funny. pretty universal it's, with Trump. I think it's yeah, pretty universal. Yeah, that's, that's just funny. <laughs> Come on. So anyway, speaking of walls, <laughs> uh, E3 is a pretty big wall in the video game industry. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue. Nice segue. Um, Seamless. Uh, uh, so FIFA hype. <laughs> well, I was going to talk about Nintendo first, but I'm going to change it up here. We'll talk about Sony first. Uh, okay. I, I feel like we should just go over the, kind of the head honchos of, of E3 because um, we're definitely going to get into a lot more over the next couple weeks. So maybe talking about Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo. Uh, and then we could just mention a couple small things at the end. Uh, but first, with Sony, um, I think some of the bigger things that we're going to see this year... Uh, hopefully more detail about Death Stranding. Um, and I know there's been uh, rumors of uh, Last of Us 2. Not rumors, but obviously trailers and stuff of Last of Us We're 2. We're getting a release uh, date. Pos- oh, this yes. year with For Last, Last of Us 2. So I have a feeling it's going to release by the end of this year. Yeah. Maybe holiday season. It'll probably be like November. Um, yeah, that's I think it was last time. It'd be awesome. The thing that I am personally most excited for through the Sony press yeah, conference yeah. is Spider-Man. More info on Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. That was one of the reasons why I picked up a PS4. Just yeah. straight honesty. So, I mean, is there anything... You know, I I had PlayStation and PlayStation 2 kind of dropped off the Sony fanboy after that. Is there anything that you guys are looking forward to that, that you know, might not be... Um, Death Stranding, Dreams? Last of Us, or Spider Man? Have we seen that? Uh, oh. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh, y- so that maybe. Was... Ref- refresh yeah, so my was, memory. I think this might be the creators of Little Big Planet. Um, in this game, you're basically creating like a world. Uh, it looks like you can like kind of create like whatever you want to do, and it's, it looks really cool. Like you can kind of shape the world and morph it and have other people play in it. So mm-hmm. I don't know. It looks really cool. Okay. That's yeah. uh Sony exclusive? Okay. Red Dead oh, Redemption yeah. oh. 2. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Give, yeah. A, and I will say this, um even though you mentioned Death Stranding, Kyle, um because it's made by Kojima, um, uh-huh. I never really experienced his work before until recently and the first maybe hour or two of Metal Gear Solid 5 is incredible so i'm looking to see what kojima does with death stranding um to see what what he gives us this year um but going outside of the titles that you mentioned i will i'm going to predict uh sony will have an announcement for horizon zero dawn 2 but i don't think we'll see much out of it um because i don't think it's going to be ready by any means but i do think we'll hear i think we'll hear like an announcement like hey we're making this Yeah. yeah that's fair I'm so, definitely looking forward to anything that they could possibly give me on Borderlands 3 because yeah. I'm so hard up, man. Yeah, I, I figure that, that especially with the leak, like the big Walmart leak and stuff, uh, with Borderlands 3 being on that list, I figure that's right up your alley there, Andrew. I feel like Borderlands 3 is like also like the same. I feel the same way about it as I do like, in, like Incredibles. It's like, you know, I've been waiting like a million years for this. So <laughs> can we please just get on with it? Get it, get it done. All right, Carrington. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, in 2K, I think 2K or Gearbox, I I think they have their own, like, conference or whatever, their announcement or whatever. Probably 2K more than Gearbox. 
Yep. They keep going back and forth as whether or not Borderlands 3 is going to be here this year, so it's still a mystery, but I, I do think we'll see something from them on Borderlands 3. I have a... a I feel like I'm 99% sure Borderlands 3 is going to make an appearance there. Yeah, I agree. I don't I don't think it'll be during Sony's press conference because Borderlands hasn't exactly been an exclusive no. game. Yeah, to Sony. The way Destiny has been with, yeah. with Sony, Borderlands hasn't, or yeah, Borderlands hasn't attached itself to a spe- specific console. So yeah. I don't think we'll see it during Sony's press conference per se, but I do think we'll see it at E3 this year. Um. So other than Sony, we've got Microsoft and Nintendo. I think with Microsoft, um, you know, over the last couple of years, they've been really focused on their hardware. I, mm-hmm. I almost feel like they're hardware more than games, in a way. Yes, I can agree with that. I think um, we all can agree with that. I I really don't know what to expect from them. I'm going to have to say probably another a new Gears of War, Gears of War Five. Uh, we'll see. Um, I and then Remedy, creators of Quantum Break and Alan Wake. Mm-hmm. Are we going to see something uh, from them this year? Man, I I hope every year we see Alan Wake. <laughs> Cuz you I, know they they've worked on what Quantum Break uh mm-hmm. last And it was fantastic. If you not guys have not played Quantum ago, Break, I, I would yeah. highly recommend it. Yeah. Um so I, you know being a huge fan of Alan Wake, I in in that game being kind of dead over the last how many years now? It's been like I feel like it's almost years. 10 because I remember playing that in college. Yeah, it's almost 10, not quite 10. OK, so I I want, you know, if they brought back Alan Wake, that would be insane. Uh, like a sequel or just uh, a whole different. I don't know, a whole different game based in the Alan Wake universe. So Phil Spencer has said, gone on record and said he's the head of Xbox division uh, for Microsoft. He's gone on record and said, we're going to see a lot of surprises this year. My thing is, we've seen a lot of announcements from Microsoft since Phil Spencer has taken the reins over there. We just haven't seen a whole bunch of releases. And so my thing is, I will, with Microsoft, I feel like we're going to get a bunch of announcements. It'll be a toss-up whether or not we see them. New Halo. Halo. Oh, Halo 6 will be there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Halo 6 will be there. Uh, Crew 2 will end up being announced. Oh, yeah. Or, in, or gameplay, they, it's already announced. Yeah, yeah they've got yeah, the yeah. Uh, the beta running live this weekend. Oh, seriously? That's awesome. Yep. Um, what, and probably wonder, another maybe, Forza. Yeah. Either yeah. Horizon yeah. or motor, Motorsports. Mm-hmm. Don't know if we'll see another Porsche there or not. <laughs> kind of cool. Hey, I don't. I I would love to see another Porsche there because the one they've had on stage in the past. Good God. <laughs> yep. But I, I don't know. Oh, I just yeah. feel like it's so predictable with with Microsoft. It's always the same games, and it's kind of boring. So, uh, I think, uh, <laughs> what was that? Uh, what was that, Andrew? <laughs> uh, what? Oh well. Uh, with Microsoft, uh, there is a game uh, that I've been wanting to see for a while that hasn't been released yet uh, called Below. And uh, it's another roguelike game. Uh, it is created uh, by um, Capybara Games. It's the same people that did uh, Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery. Sword and Sorcery. Uh, that is on uh, mobile. Uh their art design and their music in their games and the gameplay is so good and and just super unique and um, real interesting. So we saw the trailer for the game a couple of years ago on E3. I'm really hoping that we hear something uh, new about this and a release date because initially it is supposed to release in 2018. Um, and if it is, I will uh, poop my pants. Literally. <laughs> So, well, we yeah. look forward to that uh, if that happens. Yeah, so that's below it. It it, it looks really cool. Um, and then lastly, 
Uh, we have the, I feel like we have the company that is going to steal the spotlight of the show, Nintendo. I think they already have with the Pokemon announcements, and E3 hasn't even technically so. started yet. Just just elaborate there. Why do you <laughs> think they, they have, they've already stolen the, the spotlight? Because they've already shown Pokemon so much, and that's one of their biggest franchises. And then upcoming, I mean, we, we still haven't seen Metroid Prime 4. I think we'll get an actual trailer, not a teaser for Metroid Prime 4. Um, and then there have been, I think we'll, we're going to see Smash, actual gameplay mm-hmm. of Smash. I mean, they're going to have a tournament of Smash at E3. And then they have so many franchises that I know they're going to blow us away with. I just don't know what. I mean, there have been rumors we're going to see another mother, a.k.a. Earthbound. Yep. Um, I highly doubt Earthbound will be there, but if it is, like, you know, we Nintendo fans are going to go crazy for it. And, I mean, the sky's the limit with Nintendo. Their marketing has been out out of the park recently. Yeah. And so I know this year they're just they're, they they have some stuff hidden in their sleeves and they're just not saying what yet. I mean the smash announcement was incredible. Epic. Oh yeah, yeah, it was epic. Yeah. So I and I figured they're going to do something again this year. Andrew, is there anything in particular from Nintendo that you're looking forward to? Uh I don't really know. I mean, I honestly have been so busy. I haven't kept up yeah. with anything like that they're quote teasing or whatever. I mean, but um, pretty much any of their major franchises, obviously, I'm always down for. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, like Carrington said, like everything he described sounds like textbook Nintendo, quite honestly, especially of late. So that wouldn't surprise me for them to pull out a few things that really nobody's going to see coming that are going to be pretty big news. So uh, I know that across seas, they've been um, talking about the dockless switch. Yes. Have you guys heard about it? No. So, no. Uh, it is, from what I've heard, it is like a second switch for the house where um, it doesn't it doesn't come with a dock station. It's and it's fifty. I guess if if you were to um, convert the price of it over to a dollar, it is fifty dollars less than what you would pay for an uh, actual switch console. Uh, so it's basically meant to be played in handheld mode. Um, which I think is awesome, um, and I'm wondering if we're going to see anything about that released here. I, I in heard Japan the US. say that they're not planning to do any releases in the U.S. of the of uh, the um, con- uh, dockless consoles. Roger, what you just <laughs> said was not professional. <laughs> but I mean, it makes sense though, right? Because Japan, right? Their big thing is all about handhelds, so. So for them to focus yeah. on it, and I don't know, they, I think that they think that their market over here is to compete with the consoles, um, which I, I think I think but that they would. That's a mistake. How, but I think that's what I heard. That Japan has no plans to move that over to the to the U.S. Do well, you think I that? Mean, oh, go ahead. Just from my perspective, I mean, once again, you know, who knows? Because I'm not necessarily the average consumer, and I find in a lot of ways. But to me, if it's like okay, you can have a dockless switch. For fifty dollars less, or you can just have the dock, which opens up, like of you know, obviously to a lot bigger screen, a lot higher quality, you know, image and all that. Not that to say that the you know that the handheld isn't really really nice. Um, to me, I would pay the extra fifty bucks and have the dock. Like, why would I want to limit myself when I don't have to? For not a lot amount. I mean, if it was two hundred dollars, you know, maybe. But for fifty bucks, it's like just shell out the extra fifty and have both options. I think it's meant to appeal more to people that have that already have a switch, and then if they want, you know, the second switch, say like, I don't know, <laughs> like, Roger. So dumb. Yeah, like Roger. Like Roger, so. think about it. he's got Why multiple that switches. Be, like that defeats the point. Like, oh yes, we know you have this portable system with a dock, but here, wait, wait. Why don't you just leave well, that portable system at home always and get yeah. this other switch? So that you can take it places. But I think Whoa, about for the fact, blown. like, because I, I'm pretty sure from what I've heard, uh, uh, saves are transferable and data and stuff is transferable between the two switches. Don't quote which me on that. Which is new, by the way. I, That's which, new, yeah, which by is the way. New. Okay. So for me, as a dad, if my daughter was to the age of, you know, if she was able to play something on her own and I had to go to work and I want to take my Switch, but she wants to play, I mean, that would be perfect. I'd I'd pay fifty dollars less just to take a switch with me to work, 
and I still have the dock sitting at home. But I don't. That obviously that scenario is not for everyone. If you're a single person at your own house, I mean, you wouldn't need multiple switches. And if you know, I I agree with you. I'd pay fifty dollars more to have the dock just just to um have the the uh, capability of playing on my TV yeah, or playing. I think on my I think well, Nintendo's whole goal is to have a switch in everybody's hand in the household. So have like them almost like be cell yeah. phones. And I will say that it yeah. is somewhat appealing to me that, I mean, I already have a dock and if I can get another one, uh, dockless for, I mean, $50 is nothing, but I mean, if it was like a hundred dollars, I would certainly consider it and get one for my wife then. So that way we can play games together. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. That's what I'm saying. Like if it was a higher like difference in the dollar amount, then like, okay, maybe there's a point to this, but if it's only 50 bucks difference, yeah, just like said, it's nothing. Just get yeah. another switch if that's what you really want. Yeah. I Especially agree. since stocks are like $89. And so it's great. interesting. Yeah, I was just about to say that because like switch docks, uh, yeah. a 50 bucks difference, yeah. that's, I mean, yeah, that's yep. nothing. Yep. So I guess it's safe to say we're going to see some Smash. We're, hopefully we'll see more Metroid. Hopefully they don't some work. And obviously Pokemon. Uh, anything about Animal Crossing, you think? I would love to see Animal Crossing on the I Switch. Too. Likewise? Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know if we'll get it this year. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. That's that's Hopefully. the thing about Nintendo. Like, anything is possible this year. I mean, I've heard rumors there's, there's a Star Fox racing game coming out, yeah. and we might see the announcement yeah. in E3. Yeah. So Dude, I'd like to see it. Is it fair to say that, like, Metroid and Star Fox, although they're beloved franchises, they've kind of been, like, neglected, like, for a while now, Listen. as far as really mm-hmm. cranking out some great content. So You want to talk uh, about neglected? Bring why why build an F or uh, a Star Fox racing game when Nintendo should be focusing on an F Zero game? True, fair enough. But uh, now I, the Metroid one, especially, I've never played a lot of the Metroid games, but I've always like you know I've played them some, and I've you know seen a lot of other people that enjoyed them. Yep, I, they're really cool. Like I said, I mean, the character Samus is just a really awesome character, so it'd be great if they could basically come out with something that would be on the level of like what. Not to say that, you know, the Zelda franchise was still thriving even oh, before yeah. Breath of the Wild, but Breath of the Wild really, you know, was an excellent installment to the lineup to, if they could do the same thing for, you know, Metroid uh, that Breath of the Wild did for Zelda, just kind of really bring it up to the 21st century, so to speak, and have an awesome Switch game, that would be amazing. I agree, 100%. Um, so, right before we wrap it up here, let's just go around the table, not the same table that we were sitting at, at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> um, let's just all state uh, what what we are most excited for uh, this E three, and since uh, you are our guest, Roger, oh, we'll wow. just we'll start. With uh, you. I think that I am most excited uh, for Spider Man to see that to see more gameplay of that, and uh, and then also I mean this is gonna sound really bad, but I I'm kind of excited to see if Xbox is gonna is gonna fail or. Or are gonna succeed. I mean, I think this is like the <laughs> moment, the breaking moment for them. I just feel like they're the third horse in this race, and I want to see what they're gonna do. Yeah. Uh, do you have that. any crazy predictions, Roger, that you think we'll see from Xbox? Just anything you would love to see that will probably never happen. Yeah, just in general, something you think won't happen, but if it does um, happen, you're gonna your well, brain I think, will explode. I think, I, I, I think it's gonna be predictable. I think that Phil Spencer is gonna be. Uh, focusing on the whole um, play anywhere again, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if they also tout their game pass and say, "Look at look at all these great games we got coming out, and you can play it day one." Uh, it it just seems like it's a safe it's a safe it's a safe bet. I don't know. Yeah, I know this doesn't sound yeah. crazy, but uh... that's what I think they're gonna do, which is crazy, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andrew, uh, I think I'm I'm sticking with what I brought up. Uh, if we're if we're limiting ourselves to one or possibly two, I'm gonna stick with the Borderlands. Uh, like okay. I said, I'm I just 
really want to know more about that game and what exactly, you know, what kind of, I mean, hopefully they're not going to change it radically, quite honestly. Uh, I mean, I think they nailed it with Borderlands 2, so quite honestly, like, give me that with updated mechanics, graphics, and, you know, it's obviously a new story, and uh, I'll be good to go for, like, you know, a couple hundred hours. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, there's several others, but if we're going to limit ourselves to try to keep it to one or whatever, that's that's what I would pick. And do you have any crazy predictions this year that you don't think will happen, but you would hold love on, to see happen? All right, hold on. Stop here. Now, just to <laughs> clarify, you are not spinning a wheel, are you? No, no wheel. Just, just, okay. this is, this is nothing to do with the wheel, just in general. <laughs> just see him sinister. Just something for fun. Wheel. All right, so Roger has to come back on here the, and talk like Pikachu yeah, the entire episode. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, Andrew? Andrew. I have no idea about what what they're going to come up with. So Battlefront you know. three. All right, I heard you heard it from Andrew. Battlefront oh. three. <laughs> Dude, no, please let that die. That is like a dumpster fire from start to finish. In fact, EA, while you're at it, just kill yourself. <laughs> there it is. Oh, you muted up for me. So it sounded three. like you just bleeped there for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, uh, Cody. EA is, is, I should. Oh, anyway. What's up? Sorry, I'm what, done. What, what are your thoughts of E3? What's your most excited thing for it? The Division 2, which... Okay. Ooh, which good, good one. It, it was a great game when the first one was announced, and then it died, and then it was a good game upon its player base. Uh, we don't talk about it much here, which is understandable, but that's one of my um, big games I'm looking forward to this year. Awesome. Yeah, they've been teasing that a lot on uh, Twitter from what I've been seeing. Yeah. Uh, and recently. I will say real quick too, like the story was so good and it ended on a cliffhanger and none of the DLC addressed it. So I am excited to see what yeah. happens next. Yep. Yep. Care did he cut out there? He's still there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still here. Do you yeah, have any okay. surprise, um, guesses for E3 this year, Cody? Um, I'm just waiting for another YouTuber to think he's all that and try and do something super cool and then end up falling on his face. So that's all yeah. I'm, that's all I'm predicting. Listen, can I, can I, I want to speak to that? That, that was well. like the worst Definitely. part I thought of E3. It's just like, oh my God, who cares? It's so lame. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping yeah. that Ninja does something, ends up screwing up and falling on his face. I'm not a giant yep. fan of Ninja. As you may be able to tell from that, but yeah, I'm I'm, a, I'm awaiting a YouTuber yeah. to do something stupid. Yeah, Carrington, your thoughts? Um, I'm most excited for right now. If I were to pick one thing, it'll probably be Anthem by EA. Yep. Um, because <laughs> we, as a group, um, as far as Kyle, you, and Cody, and our group of friends, love Destiny so much, and. You know, with Anthem, it seems to be like the next Destiny-like game out there that's coming out. And so it'll be nice to yep. see what EA can do with that. And specifically, that is Bioware. So, you know, anything Bioware touches, I have to pay attention to. Yeah. yeah well, agree. hopefully they actually get back on track. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And I think that this year we will see... I'm going to say uh he is also gonna announce some sort of star wars game that's not battlefront is that crazy and prediction or is that an actual like <laughs> a reasonable thought okay carrington what's that what <laughs> i said is that is that your crazy prediction or is that like just kind of a reasonable thought uh that's my crazy prediction we're gonna see something star wars and okay. we're gonna see a release date within the next year okay Yes, yeah, sixty dollars and only two thousand dollars beyond that to actually be able to make the game playable. <laughs> Someone salty <laughs> for a low, low price. <laughs> no, so, I, I'm, I don't want. I don't, don't want to talk even. about it. Let's drop it. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I'm with Cody. It's, I'm with Cody. It's almost twelve o'clock, and I just got back from a ten-hour road trip, so <laughs> I'm not nice. in the mood. For that so. One. Uh, and you, oh, Kyle? Salty. Yes, even I, I am. Did not, so even though I did not mention Beyond Good and Evil 2, but it, we've seen so much of it yeah, in the I'm past six you months. Didn't mention that. We've seen so much of it the past six months. Uh, yeah. It doesn't. We're so not there's, see a bunch. there's a game last year that was announced called. Um, 
the last night, and it is uh, the art styles in, you know, the way of Blade Runner. Um, I don't remember if you guys remember seeing this. It's a side scroller, uh, and you play this dude that's in this city that's all neon lit and stuff. I don't know a whole lot about the game. We saw it last year. I want to see more of it this year. Um, it's, that's one of the games I've been kind of keeping track on over the last year. It's almost kind of like how Fee was two years ago, and I didn't hear much about it. And then finally they, they gave us a release date and stuff, so I'm hoping that's what they do with this. Uh, that's the last night. And then... Uh, crazy prediction uh, would be Al Alan Wake, something Alan Wake related. Don't know if that'll happen, but I definitely want to see more Alan Wake. If you believe it'll happen, it'll happen. I, I, I agree. I agree. So yeah, uh, we're going to have a lot more to talk about regarding E3 over the next... Um, let's see. I guess it starts in uh, probably... What, ten, is it the 10th that it starts? So it's the 12th. 12th. Um, no, ah, it starts the, the 11th. We'll just say that. We'll, we'll let you guys yeah. know here over the next few days. Uh, we are planning on having some people from the Crossplay Compatible Network uh, come on uh, during that week and just chat about what their thoughts are um, about E3 and what they're most excited for. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, yeah, man, it's that time of the year. Big E3. Uh, our, our, you know, our time of the year that we look forward to. I'm excited for it. Uh, Roger, yeah, as always, so. we love having you on here. We're glad you didn't. We're glad you didn't just you know up and drop. Oh, because yeah. of some late scheduling. No problem. <laughs> uh, no, thank you so yeah. much for having me on the show. I I really yeah. enjoy talking to you guys and and uh, you know one of the one of the yeah. one of the side effects about having a podcast is be able to make friends like you guys and that's just awesome. So thank you so much. Yep. Well, having you on. Yeah, Where can yeah, people find you? Yeah. Where can people find your podcast? Where can people, um, you know, sure. Um, chat so with you? you can find our podcast on Podbean. So it's gamerheadspodcast.podbean.com, uh, and the best way to get a hold of us is on Twitter. So that's gamerheadspc on Twitter. Okay. Awesome, and you guys can find us on Twitter, Real Dudes underscore Pod. Instagram, Facebook, Real Dudes Podcast. Um, and then make sure to email us your questions at Real Dudes Podcast. Or no, wait, wait. Podcast at Real Dudes Podcast dot com. I keep thinking <laughs> of our Gmail podcast. We don't use that much anymore. Um, and then also, you know, we have t shirts that you can get, which is on our website, www.realdudespodcast.com. Uh, check them out. Pick one up for yourself. Uh, we got some really cool designs on there, stuff that you'll definitely like. Uh, you can get it on a t-shirt, hoodie, tank top. You can even get it on a coffee mug. Uh, RealDudesPodcast.com store. You'll find our shirts there. And then, Carrington, before we, we end this episode, I just want to talk to you real quick. You had a skit that yes. uh, Roger, Roger was in. I was. Surprisingly. Yes. <laughs> Tell, you just want to give our listeners just kind of a, uh, an idea of it, especially if they haven't listened to it, and then just the work that you put into it. Just... just break it down for us a little bit here yeah sure thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to talk about it real quick so i always love like the old style radio shows that are you know just you know actors you got sounds you know to support what's going on uh within the the scene and stuff like that so i've always been a fan of that and so i decided to go ahead and create a small skit which you guys can listen to um, just look for the episode titled Real Dudes Presents. Um, so I came up with a skit where um, Chris from Play Comics Podcast, who's also part of the Crossway Compatible Network, where he is trying to decide on the next console to get um, because he only plays retro consoles and games. Um, and so there is a sequence where all of the consoles are trying to vie for his attention and trying to sell him on buying uh, said console, whether it be the PS4, Xbox One, or the Nintendo Switch. Um, and our good friend Roger was good enough to participate and played the, the character of the PlayStation, and he did it in the vein of... Uh, 
Joker from the Batman animated series, which I can't thank him enough for. Because he did, I will say, Roger, you did a good job because you played it two different ways. And I made the choice of going with the way of the Joker when you gave me the two different recordings because I thought it it was more fun. You could <laughs> tell you had more fun with it. And so I can't thank you enough for being on, oh, you're for doing that. Um, but yeah, if you haven't listened to it, go check it out. Um, it took me a good solid month from recording, uh, from writing, recording to editing, um, to, to, uh, to finish that up. Yeah. It's definitely Roger, worth checking yeah. out. Oh yeah. And Roger, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for uh, doing that. Cause oh, that thanks was, for, thanks a blast. for asking me. It was fun. Oh, thank you so much for asking me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah it's definitely worth checking out um yeah I, I don't have anything else to say guys um hopefully we hear more another skit in the future and uh yeah yeah uh, i do have shirt. one uh, in the the writing it's it's still in the writing stages so i do have another one nice. up and coming well guys again it's nice having you on, and uh, we look forward to chatting more about E3 in the next upcoming weeks. Um, other than that, I hope you all have a rad day. Bye. Bye, Pete.